The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. From Hollywood, The Tonight Show, starring Johnny Carson. This is Ed McMahon, along with Doc Severinsen. And the NBC Orchestra inviting you to join Johnny and his guests, Johnny Mathis, Rob Reiner, George Carlin, Carol Wayne, and fashion expert, Mr. Blackwell. And now, here's Johnny. creating my piano. I didn't see anybody <laughs> helping me unpack. Hey, this is, this is great, isn't it? This is great to be out here. This is the monologue portion of the show. And, uh, you know, there's an old saying. They say a monologue is kind of a marriage between the performer and the audience. And you know my track record with marriages. <laughs> Let's see if we can do better tonight. I had a big first night in Hollywood. I stayed up all night and watched Glenn Ford and Edgar Buchanan in bed. We gotta get those guys dates. Uh, that rash acting up again, is it? What have you got? I'm That's... going through my chicken plucker period here. <laughs> you... Good heavens. Is that a California? Yes. Raul has moved out What here. is that? <laughs> what is that? This is... Uh in honor of all the chicken pluckers of America. Well, they should be arrested. You have to shave this shirt about once a week. I hope so. <laughs> you, got, you got any more of those? Um, we're staying still at the Sheridan uh, Knockwurst. <laughs> what? Sheridan Universal. Did I ever tell you that it overlooks Catalina Island? Completely overlooks it. <laughs> also overlooks the better hotels. Uh, no, no, it's a nice place. Ed uh, went for a swim in the pool today. I saw you dive in what used to be the shallow end. <laughs> are you looking around for a place to live? Yeah. Houses, you know, are expensive out here. That is true, right? But don't kid anybody. I, uh... How expensive are they? <laughs> get, get his name. Uh, no, I finally asked my real estate agent if he, uh... if Los Angeles has any good mobile homes, and he said, in Los Angeles, all homes are mobile. <laughs> Weird. It's the only state where you rent an apartment and the landlord gives you a month's deposit in case the house moves. Did you know that? <laughs> That's true. Not in Burbank. No, it's nice out here in Burbank. And we are actually in Burbank. That's true. We say Hollywood, but we're in Burbank, which is a nice, fun-loving city out here. <laughs> I'll give you an idea. Last night, the West Coast president of the National Broadcasting Company took me out on the town, and we did everything that you can do in Burbank. Which means we got a bucket of chicken. <laughs> and we went over to Lucky's and watched them uh, stack the soup cans. <laughs> it's a big night. Burbank's the only town I know where they have parking meters for wheelchairs. Have you seen that? <laughs> yeah, Fred, you, you'll need one, yeah. What else is happening? Uh, see, uh, on our staff, some of the people are single, like Craig Tennis, who's our talent coordinator out here, and he had a reunion with his girl that he met out here last time. Uh, not the prettiest thing, but, you know, uh, Congolia clap saddle, did you? Uh, she got so excited, she almost broke her leash. Craig got off the plane. Cesar, Cesar Chavez had a big meeting with Ed yesterday. He figures that if he can get Ed to boycott grapes, they can wipe out the industry in a couple of weeks. Have you done anything of great note out here? No, I've been very quiet. Very quiet? The theater, you know, they've got some fairly good theater out here in, in, in Los Angeles. It's not quite as, I'm not saying this is a downer, it's not quite as sophisticated or developed as the theater in New York. I mean, for example, they're showing Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf with Ozzie and Harriet. <laughs> uh, 
Karen Valentine is playing in the trial of Mary Lincoln. Uh, and the Jackson Five in A Raisin in the Sun. So it's not, <laughs> it's not as hip. What, uh, did anybody, this is strange. You know, the astronauts have gone to the moon and they've come back. And I wonder how many people actually saw the astronauts when they were on the moon. People are getting very blasé, true? How many of you actually saw a lot of that coverage? I'm, I'm interested. Okay. How many did not really see the landing or the landing on the moon or anything? I'm just interested. That is incredible. Did you know they found glass on the moon? That is true. Scientists said it was formed by meteorites hitting the surface of the moon at high speeds. One thing they don't understand, they don't know why it says Coke on it. But they do have it. That's uh, hanging them up. We've, uh, we've got a good show tonight, haven't we? Yes. Mr. Johnny Mathis is with her, Rob Reiner from All in the Family, Crazy George Carlin, uh, Carol Wayne, the girl with the big eyes and the little teeny voice. <laughs> she knows that, very big eyes and a little, little teeny voice. And Mr. Blackwell, who each year comes out with a list, you know, of the 10 worst dressed women in the world. And he's out here to plug his new book, How to Take an Inseam Without Becoming Emotionally Involved. <laughs> So, we've got all of those things and more, and we'll be with you in just one And we'll be back in a moment after this message of interest. You've heard about a pain reliever significantly more effective than the common aspirin tablet. The pain reliever is Excedrin. And not one, but two important medical research studies on pain other than headache provided evidence of this effectiveness. It's time you tried this pain reliever for yourself. In major magazines out now, there is a free Excedrin sample offer. Use it. Ever wonder why girls in love have such beautiful complexions? Maybe it's because they walk in the rain so much. Moisture helps make faces sweet and soft. And that's the magic of Noxema Medicated Skin Cream, the moisturizer you wash with. Noxema cleans like soap, but doesn't dry. It leaves moisture in. You can touch the softness that tells the world your face belongs to Noxema, the moisturizer you wash with. I went over to check Doc's blouse. Do you know you can see through that thing? Yes. I didn't want to, but you can, you, you can see through it. You get silly. He is very brave. But I, I feel today a kind of a uh, permanence. Do you feel that? Sure. I, I mean, think it's going to be. Uh, that's a new picture they did of you over there. Isn't that a nice, humble, new? humble little touch in the yes. studio? Picture eight feet tall yes. of your face. A little I think that's humility nice. there. Yeah. But that's a brand new, Goodness, a new version. A little much. And then they have one on the back door on both sides, coming in and going out. I mean, they, on a men's room door, you just have men on one side, but, but here, here, wow. here, both in and out, you find you. But Hope, did you see what they did with Bob's picture? Because yeah. he uses the same studio. Half of his nose is on the other half of the door, the nose. Yeah. <laughs> and they drew it out about another four feet. And yesterday, if I don't, don't injure myself, could you help me with this? Oh, no, sure. today I went down to see the city council. Well, I thought because... Yes, true. Taping. All right. It was proclaimed. Now, how about oh, that? Lord. Johnny I, Carson. I was invited to go down to the Los Angeles City Council. Turn this this way so they can see it. And uh, met with them down there, and they presented us with this uh, little memento there. This wallet is not size. your dollar uh, ninety eight chip boat. Oh no, they went. They went for this six is... seven bucks on that. <laughs> there are actual screws in the back of this and everything. Look at it. It goes this is on. Not nailed on. This is permanent. Oh yeah, you yeah. can go. It says whereas and whereas and whereas and does all that stuff, and then it says. They uh, did a lot of research too. Yes, they did, and signed by all the. Uh, They've city got, Council, uh, Joel Walks was down there, City Council. A there, mention of your, uh, here it is, the great Carsoni when you were a... They got everything. A great magician at the age of 14. But did you know May, May 1st is, uh, is Johnny Carson Day? Yeah, mm -hmm. officially. Yeah, well, you didn't... That's what I said. You didn't I said do they... anything. Well, I... When was she supposed to take me to lunch, or...? I don't know. I tried to take you out to dinner last night, and you were tied up, so I don't know what to do. I'm going to send over some uh, tacos. To your uh, hotel. Yeah. Oh, that'll take care of the rest of the day <laughs> and the night. All righty. But that's very nice. And Doc is mentioned here, Ed McMahon. You're mentioned there. Very good. All right, let's see you lift. That's got to weigh 40 pounds, oh, that crazy thing. Oh, my God. 
Just <laughs> throw it on uh, Fred's foot over there. On the roll that out. Remember the last time we were in California, I said I saw a guy standing on the street corner yes. just waving, saying, Hi, Cadillac, right. as cars went by. Now, I saw this driving up Beverly Glen Boulevard today, and I don't know... Usually, if you have something outside that says help wanted, it says gardener yeah. or waitresses or something. On a, it looks like an apartment. It's just a, a guy's house. I don't know if there's a guy or not, but there's a sign out. All it says was girls wanted. But it didn't say waitresses or help or sure. maids or anything. <laughs> and I envisioned some guy sitting back there, you know, with girls stopping, saying, well, what do you want? No, I just want girls. <laughs> I got to check into that. Beverly Glen Boulevard, sign about that big, says girls wanted. I got a great idea. No explanation. I got a great idea. Tomorrow. You dress up as Aunt Blabby. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you watch me, don't you? Yes. <laughs> All right, Savage. Got a couple of telegrams here to Dear Johnny. Welcome. I got these came in yesterday. Dear Johnny, welcome to California. Please read my wire on your show tonight, because I haven't worked in two days and I need the publicity. Love Jack Benny. <laughs> <laughs> I got this one about ten minutes later. Dear Johnny, welcome to California. Don't read Jack's wire on your show tonight. Read mine, love, George Burns. Huh? <laughs> George did it again, didn't he? What else do we have here? A little odds and ends. We've got a good show tonight. We have Carol Wayne with us, who's our matinee lady in our tea time movie. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Johnny Mathis, Rob Reiner, George Carlin, and Mr. Blackwell. We have... Is he what? announcing his uh, ten worst dress? I think he did that already. Oh. Remember several months ago? Yeah. He's just going to come on and be his charming... Runchy self. <laughs> you know. He says what's on his mind, though. Oh, yes. Here are some actual listings from Television Guide. We have to show those because people don't believe They don't believe actual. that these are actually real. These are out of Television Guide, and they give you a little capsule pricey, pricey. pricey of the show, which I find difficult sometimes reading is how anybody would watch the show. Mm. Because they, for example, now these are real. Nanny and the Professor. Hal has developed an itch. <laughs> That's the entire <laughs> summation of that particular episode. Great basis for a plot. That's right. Hal develops an itch, and they write a story, story on that. My three sons. Steve struggles with a rash. <laughs> so, my little Margie. Vern gets fed up. <laughs> Cades County. Indian is hit by a baseball. <laughs> Rerun. I mean, I'll come on. Wouldn't you think you'd want to catch that one again? <laughs> French chef, Julia Child prepares French fried potatoes. Now, how exciting can that be? <laughs> NBC Nightly News, NBC News explores the world of pain. Now, get this one, Twilight Zone is a little longer than most. Joey Crown, a trumpet player who can't get a job, stay off the bottle or hit the high notes, sells his horn and steps in front of a moving truck. <laughs> He was supposed to be here tonight. Yeah, that's right. He's, he's got a gig somewhere. My three sons. Barbara has one of those days. <laughs> now, come on. Don Rickles. He becomes ill with tension. A lot of sicknesses here, right? Lots rashes and itches and hitting an Indian got hit with a baseball. That's my thing. This is your life. Ralph Edwards surprises Joe Frazier. <laughs> Ralph is not thinking too well. That doesn't cover all of them. We think if we give you a little more, uh, something that'll... Meteor. What? Meteor. Meteor, yes. yes. It will really titillate yes. your imagination and want you to tune in. So we have some of our own here. The Oral Roberts Show. Oral Roberts visits the fabulous form and tries to heal Chick Hearn's tongue. Ah, <laughs> uh, Adam 12. Malloy and Reed track a weird Burbank mobster who leaves a horse's head in a guy's bed and sells the rest of the horse to the NBC commissary. <laughs> oh, here's the Jack LaLanne show. Eileen Feather guest stars as she and Jack measure each other. <laughs> Sesame Street. Senator Muskie's campaign manager counts from 10 to 1. <laughs> All in the family. In a poker game, Archie beats five clubs with five spades, but later he is beaten by five spades with five clubs. <laughs> uh, Marcus, you couldn't have done a joke like that a few years ago, but you can do it now because all, all in the family does it. Marcus will be MD. A patient rings for the night nurse, and Marcus helps her zip up. <laughs> Bonanza, Hoss sees a mule deer and lines his chaps with salt. Weird, weird. 
Gunsmoke. After a hayride, Doc treats Matt and Kitty for nasty hay burns. <laughs> you know, that show's been on 17 years, and I've never seen her him kiss that girl yet. Her kiss that girl yet? Well, I mean, the, uh, uh, the marshal. <laughs> you know, give me a beer, Kitty. That's all he does. They never go upstairs. They never do anything. <laughs> they never. Now, that's just not real. Medical center. Dr. Gannon is forced to fire a bad intern who tries to stop a bleeding ulcer by having the patient suck on a styptic pencil. <laughs> Jerry visits. You've seen Jerry yes. Dumphy? Jerry visits Pat Boone's home and watches as Pat baptizes a dwarf in the wading pool. <laughs> Those are just some uh, little, uh, little things we had. All right, now, that's okay. With Pat We'll be... Okay, you're a good group tonight. Uh, right now, before Johnny comes out, here is... Do I have to hold something up? No. no. Here is Jell-O Soft Swirl, the treat for the nicest people in the world, your family and mine. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hey, is company coming? No. Whatever gave you that idea? Hey, Mom, is it okay if I... What? Oh, do I have to get dressed for dinner? No, you just sit right down. Is your mother coming? No. It's a company. No company. Just us. Your family is among the nicest people in the world, aren't they? So why shouldn't you treat them like company every night? Jell-O has a new dessert that fits right in with that kind of thinking. It's called Soft Swirl. A totally new kind of dessert that's rich and creamy, yet light enough to peek and swirl. And you can serve soft swirl 15 minutes after you first think of it. Make any day a little special with new Jell-O soft swirl in peach, vanilla, strawberry, and chocolate. Hey, Mom. Thanks for having us. You know, there it has happened in our business that some singers make a hit record or two and they drop out of sight and that's it, but only the ones that have a lot of talent manage to stay in the business for many years and still attract huge audiences wherever they appear. And Johnny Mathis is certainly one of those. This is his latest album on Columbia, and uh, he will be appearing at uh, Chicago at McCormick Place. Did they rebuild that? Didn't that McCormick Place burn down? Yeah, this is brand new. A year or so ago? Monstrous place. And they, re I they built a new place? Recently. Oh, it's enormous. Because the old one, yeah, I think, good. Well, he will be there. Uh, it, they did build it. Otherwise, yes. uh, Johnny's not a trouble. <laughs> we're working on a field we're somewhere. Running out of time. We're running what? Oh, we're running out of time. Well, he opens for a week at the Latin Quarter in Cherry Hill on May 22nd, and he'll be in Chicago on May 20th, and he's here now. Would you welcome Johnny Mathis? <laughs> Star to the ends of the earth just to be where you are. No matter where you roam, I'll never be far behind. Who cares where the path may wind as long as I find you? Though the melody dies, the song lingers on, and a thousand goodbyes.
first time ever I saw your face. I thought the sun rose in your eyes, and the moon and the stars. back. John and I, he's got something else crazy planned for tonight. There are certain people who really like salads, and uh, the, the <laughs> there are wishbone people. That's what it is. That's right, John. Wishbone people. People who thrive on the good life. Good times, good friends, good food. There are people who really like salads, and for them, there's only one. Wishbone. Wishbone salad dressing in a big variety of flavors. Each one blended to give salads a taste as fresh and as zesty as the good life itself. Wishbone, for people who really, really like salads. When Lipton blows the whistle, you're gonna have some great iced tea. Listen to the Lipton whistle. Brisk, brisk, brisk. Lipton Tea. Lipton flow through tea bags. Like two bags of flavor in one. Travel arrangements provided by United. Flying to more of your land more often than any other airline. In Hollywood, the Tonight Show staff stay at the new Sheraton Universal Hotel. One of the 200 exciting Sheratons throughout the world. Cars for Johnny Carson and the staff provided by Hertz where you can rent a fine car on one of the Hertz special vacation plans. Great man, 
then. It's exciting, yes, it is. You, you're smoking tonight. <laughs> hey, you tore them apart tonight with those numbers. Thank you very much, John. I haven't seen you since uh, on television since the night of the Academy Awards, where you did that final, uh, when Chaplin was out there and everybody. I did not realize that Charlie Chaplin wrote that song. Is that, was that one of his? Smiles, all your heart yes. is great. I did not know it until that night. Um, that that was, a lot know, of other people didn't know it, too, Johnny. <laughs> I mean, uh, the words you mean? The people who were singing. Yeah, yeah I, I noticed when they pan around, people were going, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> knowing the camera was on them and trying to fake it, you know. Yeah, yeah. and that was uh, that was the extent of, uh, you know, it, it really is perhaps the most exciting evening anyone yeah. could, could ever spend, especially if you're a, a performer or a presenter because you're backstage and the only people sitting next right. to you are Patty Chayefsky, Tennessee Williams, and you know, people of that nature. So you're so busy training and looking and uh, what have you that uh, you, uh, you it, it's a good it's a good thing to rehearse whatever you're going to yeah. do very well in front because it, it's so exciting that sometimes uh, everybody was kind of mumbling a little bit. You seem to know the you seem to know the lyrics. Well, it, uh, I was standing as I said next to uh, Tennessee, I think, and. And Jane Fonda and Jill St. John, and they don't know Smile. You know? I just wouldn't think Jane Fonda would know Smile right off. <laughs> I don't know why. So, you know what I've always wanted to do? You know, you know when you go to an opening of a football game or a basketball game where they sing the Star Spangled Banner? It's been a secret desire of mine. Because everybody doesn't sing too loud because they don't want you know, the guy standing next to them to hear him. So they all say, can you? And they, I want to take, you sneak Jan Pierce in or Robert Merrill, you know, and you kind of disguise them and then have them when they all stand up, just in the stands. You know, like it's a, just an ordinary guy. Wouldn't that be a gas? Yeah. And he comes out, oh, say, you know. <laughs> and then sit down. I'll take you, come to think of it. <laughs> I don't have to take Meryl, I'll take you. That would be a gas. Uh, what it's harm? Easy. I'll yeah. tell you a, a, a secret, though. It's easier to sing loudly than it is to sing softly. You mean? So just take that, something, just for example, anything. Now, don't take the national anthem because people will, I think we're being disrespectful. But what do you mean? Take, okay. take a song that's easy to sing loud and I'll try it. I did not know that. Oh. I thought uh, it was easy to kind of throw it away, you know. Oh, no. It's not. And I can't take anything because I can't think of anything. Well, let's say, what could we sing? What could we, what, <laughs> what could what's, we sing? What's hot? Just name it. Bet uh, you by golly, wow. That's your by golly, wow. <laughs> That's not in my book. Yeah, what, uh, <laughs> why is it easier to sing loud? It's a very pretty song. Uh, you can cover? Be because it doesn't take any really control. What's a hot song? A good con control. What's a rainbow? Song? Did you ever see Did you ever see a dream walking? Well, see, you well can I get... did. <laughs> I don't know why you even brought that up. Right. Take the light off at the band. They molt when you do that. <laughs> uh, you have some more things planned to harm me. Last first time you're on the show, we high jumped. I practically uh, ran a lance through myself. <laughs> the bar slipped off, and I was impaled. And the next last time you were here, you had some young cows on stage, which were very disrespectful to the stage. <laughs> very ungracious behavior. What do we have tonight? Well, Johnny, actually tonight I'm, I'm really trying to help you and not harm you. Oh. I realize that you're from New York, mm -hmm. and this is uh, perhaps the first time that you're going to spend any, you know, you're going to spend the rest of your days here. So I really... <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you're from Forest Lawn or something. <laughs> Dearly beloved, we're gathered here. No, you're... I yeah, we're going to be permanent, and we'll go I mean, back I, to New York. It is, it is right. like going to be home for quite a while. Right. And uh, we out here are, uh, we drive quite differently from the way you drive I in have New noticed. York. In other words, you know, the, the way we find New Yorkers out here is when they blow their horn. But we don't blow our horns out here, unless yeah. in an emergency. And uh, I've noticed it's the only place in the world where you drive at 65 and a guy behind you is honking. <laughs> you know, because you're holding up traffic. No. <laughs> Weird. No, well, we don't blow our horns, but... Uh, what, uh, what we do do, uh, for instance, uh, I'll give you some, for instance, when you get in the car, first of all, right. you buckle up for safety, right. of course, nothing more than that. And you give a little, few helmets. That helps. That helps. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then on the freeways out here, 
you can, uh, if you see some lady driving around like that, that doesn't mean anything. She's probably just drawing her nails. Oh, I see that. <laughs> and uh, a guy doing this at a stoplight. Nothing. No, he's just stretching, you know, nothing more. But uh, there are a lot of things, a lot of hand signals you can give. You saw The Godfather? Yes. Well, there are a lot of hand signals, so you can learn from that, too. But we won't go into yes, that. Yes, there are. Um, I don't think we can do most I of them, would, either. I would uh, like to show you. Uh, you better teach me to drive. Well, You've I'll, got some I'll, contraption I'll show you here. a couple. couple All right. Shall we go over, Shall we go over okay. and see what's going to happen here? <laughs> Did you ever see a dream walking? Okay, uh, it doesn't matter. Let's, uh, let's start a minute. Is there a little gasoline engine on? Yeah, nothing more. Let's How do you see. start it? Oh, you can just grab this thing, I think. You didn't tell me about getting out of it when the handle is turned. There's a signal. Oh, there's a signal. I know. Yes. Well, those are crazy. What do you call those things? It's like know. the old bumper cars you used to have. You know, with the thing that went up to the ceiling yeah. in, the, in the in the fun house. Yeah, Dodger. But those are uh, great. Yeah. Self-powered with their own engine. And you, I guess you can bump into anything. They don't hurt. Those are crazy. Yeah. I was uh, I, w I was hoping we'd have one of those collapsible walls we could drive through. Well, you, I almost <laughs> did it over there. Yeah. Stay tuned. We'll be back after this message with Mr. George Carlin. Ah. Hello, ladies. Today we're going to place all this lovely garbage in this trash bag. Seal, shake vigorously, toss in the air, and let drop. 
What we have is an unbroken trash bag because it's a totem trash bag made of heavy polyethylene fortified with the EO2 process to give totem two-way strength. Nasty tears and leaks are a messy no-no, ladies. Purchase only totem trash bags. They're strong. If he doesn't feel the difference, he has no feelings. If he doesn't feel the difference, he has no feelings. After one bath in Calgon bath oil beads, your skin will feel softer and smoother. After just one bath, my next guest is one of the brightest and inventive young men working today. This is his album called AM and FM. Would you welcome back, please, George Carlin. George. <laughs> I understood. I, d I didn't know for a while whether you were going to be with us today. Somebody said you were. Uh, no. A sore throat? What? Laryngitis, really. Uh, partly, yes, something like that has been uh, going around. And well, then a little abuse, you know, staying up a little late sometimes. Did they yuck, do? Yuck, yuck, yuck. I, mean, I got a laryngitis only once, and I remember they went in and some doctor took out a thing that looked about. Yeah. It was going to reach to your toes. Yeah. And, and he tells went you to say something like. Say inconsequently or something. Yes, why he uh, goes on and touches the vocal cords. Oh. That's a lot of fun. And I tend to uh, gag. I'm not good at that. Nobody, nobody can do that. Uh, I'm getting over it. I wanted to be the first person, by the way, to officially welcome you to the Slauson off-ramp, John. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I noticed. We get I'll have to get one of those signs for you and just leave it right up Slauson there. Slauson off-ramp. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a gas out here. One thing about L.A., too, that you, you'll notice, or might have noticed your last time here, everyone who moves here from the east, <clears throat> they have a winter coat that they need in Minnesota, and they come out here and they don't need it, and it goes away for a while, sometimes 8, 12, 15 years, and a really cold day comes along, <laughs> and if you go downtown in L.A., it looks like a 1945 newsreel. <laughs> Everybody brought out the, yeah. broke out the coats. That's Old funny. Coat, yeah. I never thought of that. That's true. You really don't need a... I suppose a light top coat or something. Well, for, yeah, I guess they get them for, the, for skiing. Folks who go up there probably have a new one, but everyone else just waits and waits, and then they wear that three-quarter length. Yeah. Remember those? Yeah. Hey, no, I'm okay. Yeah. Mackinaws. Yeah. I remember we used to call them in the Midwest. Fingertips, we'll give fingertip over. Come get your fingertip this year. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Man. <laughs> <laughs> what else have you been up to? Well, uh, I, by the way, I would love to sit in the same section in the ballpark with the Mormon Tabernacle Choir sometime. Wouldn't that be a sneak them all in? That's been a secret desire of mine. I, I wouldn't say anything. I'd just be listening. Then. That would be fine. Try to get him to do that again, if you could, one more time. That would be crazy. Uh, yeah, the thing I wanted to mention is, this is my... I collected fan mail from 12 years in the business. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of folks print small. You know. Of course. These are some uh, letters which I won't read, really, but I, I brought them as an example of the hair <laughs> poem, you know, that... Well, yeah, the thing you do about your hair. Yeah, it's not really a poem. It's the thing anyone could do with a it's rhyming dictionary. Statement, I guess. Yeah, I just, I didn't use the dictionary, but I mean, I could have gone to it for a few more, but it's just a simple kind of a thing with a lot of rhymes. But apparently a lot of people both like it or entertained by it, and it means a little something to some right. guys who are going through that, maybe with their folks or a parent or grandparent or teachers or something. And because the kind of mail, both on Flip's show and your show and from the album, has been what it has been, I wanted to right. share and show an example of that. I have, uh, some of them are serious, some of them like are from speech teachers and, and they talk about motivation and learning right. and, and so forth and that impresses me because I uh, got out of school as soon as they opened the door. <laughs> you didn't, weren't a, well, you weren't a student, huh? No, I couldn't, uh, the regimentation, I was kind of an independent kid and I had a grammar school with a great deal of freedom in the classroom and then the high school they tried to put me into was a strict kind of a Catholic Christian Brothers high school and well, I, I, was, I was finished with. I mean, that was because of a good grammar school. Uh, there's an 80-year-old, a 9-year-old here, but this is a letter that interested me that I wanted to uh, tell you about before I do hair. This kid, I guess, uh, he's uh, a young... When I say kid, I usually mean below 10, but I guess he's not. I guess he's older than me. He says, I have hair to my shoulders, and I get hassled all the time. I got relieved of my job at a gas station. Definitely, he's over 10. And, uh, <laughs> and I got kicked off the golf team. After getting kicked off the team, I went to the principal to discuss the matter, and he agreed with the coach. Next, I went to the director of secondary education, and he was a real fair man. He's going to have a meeting with the coach and the principal in Oklahoma City and trying to get me back on the team. The main reason I wear my hair long is to meet 
and become friends with open-minded people and unbigoted people like this. With long hair, you eliminate trial friendships. Mm. With closed-minded people, because they already dislike you. The director of secondary education, who is fair, thought your poem about hair was meaningful. We'd like to copy it and print it in the PTA newspaper. And that's what I'd like to do from over there. You know, what is it about the hair that turns a lot of people off? Well, you automatically say, okay, no, no way. You know, when the hair is down here, long. I, th I think a lot of it stems from our, the older forms of uh, you're a man and you're a woman and that's all. You can't be weaker for a man, you can't be stronger for a woman. And anything that confuses that for people is a threat to some people. In other words, they have to know exactly yeah. where they stand. I think, and, and then secondly, there, is, there was the cliche that anyone with long hair is completely dirty and immoral and doesn't wash the hair and doesn't, you know, do anything right. else. That the, hair, the hair went along with a lot of other things. But a lot of that has changed. Uh, I've noticed it since I've had about two years now of, of having extra hair. No longer when you go in the store do people go, Yeah, 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 yeah. They stop. I think it's the reason they don't do it anymore is because they realize they have two or three of these people in their families now. <laughs> Sunday dinner. Right. Oh. And they're thinking, well, look, maybe he's like Eddie, you know. <laughs> maybe he's straight. Let's trust him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah they're, uh, it's, it's different. I may have it's I may not have. as emotional. No, you've done it before, but it's a good piece, and that's what he's going to do for you, which is just a, kind of a statement about, even a little, um, about hair. Uh, what do you call it? A preface to it. Preface? Okay. okay. From the spot, sure. I didn't even ask him. Is this a good one here? Yeah, where's ever comfortable there? Uh, one thing I did want to mention is, have you ever been into a... Um, a bus station or a railroad station where they have a little counter that sells food. It's usually called Terminal Lunch, and I've never been able to eat it. Those <laughs> you know. Yeah, it just somehow it gets to me, man. And the other thing is the football players. This year, football has uh, moved the hash marks, but I'm quite sure the football players will find them and smoke them just the same. So I don't worry about that. The, uh... The hair poem came about because I was still working in uh, what you might call regular nightclubs, kind of straight nightclubs, and I was changing. My, my parents and my material were changing, and it was a bit of a shock to some of the, the gentlemen, mostly gentlemen in those nightclub audiences, and uh, I had to find a way to break the tension down, and to directly talk about the hair was the way I, I chose. I'm aware some stare at my hair. In fact, to be fair, some really despair of my hair, but I don't care because they're not aware, nor are they debonair. In fact, they're just square. They see hair down to there, say beware, and go off on a tear. I say no fair. A head that's bare is really nowhere. So be like a bear. Be fair with your hair. Show it you care. Wear it to there. To there. Or to there, to there. My wife bought some hair at a fair to use as a spare. Did I care? Au contraire, <laughs> spare hair is fair. In fact, hair can be rare. Fred Astaire got no hair, <laughs> nor does a chair, nor a chocolate eclair. And where's a hair on a pair? Nowhere, mon frere. <laughs> now that I've shared this affair of the hair, I think I'll repair to my lair and use nair. Do you care? <laughs> Thank you. I was asked to uh, share a swallow with you again. Not many people are willing to share intimate things like a swallow. You rarely hear a swallow. I don't mean the bird, of course. I mean swallowing. You have to be really crushed into the elevator to hear it. <laughs> you see, there are two parts to the swallow. Many people don't know it. The first part is when you pour something in your mouth, your throat closes up because your throat doesn't trust your mouth. Man. <laughs> Your throat knows your mouth is crazy. Your throat knows your mouth will do anything, so it protects you. You pour some in, throat closes up, says, check that stuff out. <laughs> Brain say, so let it go. <laughs> Here's that second half again, and the first. <laughs> Was that too soft? While there is some water left to drink, my tribute to industry. Oh, beautiful for smoggy skies, insecticided grain, for strip mined mountains, majesty above the asphalt plain. 
America, America, man sheds his waste on thee and hides the pines with billboard signs from sea to oily sea. We'll be back, and now here's two, what's the, two new ways to go from carrier air conditioning. If you're considering central air conditioning, let me show you the two new ways to go, both carrier. This is the round one, most advanced, most efficient, quietest unit in carrier's history. Cools the whole house at low speed and shifts into high only on real scorchers. Now, here's a first, a solid state control package that monitors and protects every critical circuit. The round one, the best money can buy from Carrier. This one's the new compact, best buy for the money. Also from Carrier, doesn't have all the round one's features, yet it cools every bit as well. And with its unique computer design fan, it's just about as quiet. Every home should have one or the other. Let your carrier dealer help you decide. Look in the yellow pages under air conditioning. Carrier. My next guest appears regularly, I'm sure as you know, on the uh, much talked about uh, television series, All in the Family. Would you welcome back Rob Reiner. Rob. <laughs> I was telling George, I've, you know, I've been a fan of George's ever since, you know, I can first remember him. And boy, is he good now. Yeah, he's, he's right. always been good. I've always laughed at him, but I really, you know, I really dig him. I just feel a little We've said that before. I will get lost. Okay. <laughs> you ever wear your hair longer than that? Uh, We're talking about hair. I right? have, yeah. At, <coughs> at one point in my life, it, I had, I looked very much like George. I had a long beard. As a matter of fact, wait a minute. Uh, what? No, I had the beard and the long hair and everything. Yeah. Did you find it attitudes of people different when the hair was really long? Uh, and say... Well, at the, the time that George was talking about, uh, it, you know, the two years ago when people did in the you know supermarket, that's when I had my hair long. So that was the worst time in the world to have your hair long. But I think that's why the kids grew their hair long at that time for that yeah. very Part, reason partly, yeah. to get that kind of thing. And now it's. So. It's falling out in droves. Are you losing your hair, really? Yes, I'm really losing. You're going to do what your dad did, huh? I hope not. Not too uh, much of what he did. They say that runs in the family. That the, the hair loss is well, it's, a it's supposedly generic, it's supposed to be on the mother's generic. side of the family. Really? My mother has all her hair, so uh, I, don't, I don't know. Have her give some to your dad. I mean, how's all in the family? What, what, it's what's going great, of course. Doing very well. The top of the charts. It's not bad yeah, for no, two years, huh? No, yeah. Which, I don't know how long that'll last. But I, Hope for a long time. But how did they describe the character when you went in? Did you have to audition for this, or did they just say, Yeah, hey, we I, got a I auditioned point? for it. Uh, I guess a few people people know by now that we there were two other pilots done for ABC before mm -hmm. the series got to CBS, and I auditioned for it when it went originally for ABC. Yeah. I didn't get the part. Some other guy got the part, That's and uh, I wasn't good there, I don't think. I was young, you know, and I was just. And kind of I was in love and... Sing loud, it sounds better. Yes. Sing loud as Johnny. Ah! Did you ever... How did we get into that anyway? <laughs> we have to take a break and we will be back and continue this discussion further. I hope. Yes, we will. Oh, here's, here's Ed with one of the best new ideas in men's slack since Sansa Belt. GMR's new slack, Sansa Belt 2. Sansa Belt 2 with great new fashion that begins right here at the waist. On the outside, the waistband is the same fabric as the slack, but... On the inside, JMAR's special elastic webbing. It breathes and bends with you to give you more comfort than you've ever known before. Yes, this is Sansa Belt 2, one of the best looking slacks you could ever own, with more fashion, like top pockets and a two button extension, and double knit fabrics of 100% Dacron polyester. That's the no quit knit that always looks as if it's just been pressed. So in these days, when all too often you find your Paying more for less? Surprise yourself with a pair of Jamar's Sansa Belt 2 with Daycry. See how you get more of everything. More fashion, 
more fit, more comfort. Because Sansevelt II is made by the people who care, for people who care. That's J. Mar Ruby Incorporated, Michigan City, Indiana. <laughs> Turn as we promised. My guest tonight are Johnny Mathis, George Carlin, Rob Reiner. Carol Wayne will join us with Mr. Blackwell. We were talking about uh, all in the family, of course, about the way you, you first got it. What was your what was your impression of uh, Had you ever met Carol O'Connor before? No, I I had only seen him in, in, in the movies. I saw him in a, in a picture the other night, you know, an old Western yeah. picture. Yeah, he's, with a beard he's a and fine, very fine versatile. He's uh, been a fine actor, actor for 20 years that, that I know of, and right. now is just coming to the forefront, you know, they, they, they're real re-releasing these pictures, you know. Right. And uh, now there's such an identification with, with this character that uh, a friend of, uh, people are telling me they went to see Cleopatra, which he plays, I think he plays Casca in that. That's right, he is One of that. the slayers of Caesar. And at the point, in the most dramatic point in the picture where Rex Harrison as Caesar is getting slayed, they go, get him, Archie! You know, they're screaming out, <laughs> room the $40 million picture <laughs> down the drain. Yeah. Kind of takes away from the dramatics right yeah. there. That's funny. You, you grew up in Hollywood among show people all your life, so you probably, to you, it was fairly normal. You probably get this question a lot because uh, your dad being in the business uh, as a performer and a writer and a producer, it was perfectly normal to you. Yeah, I, I, well, I grew up... People always expect, you know, for, yeah. to, to be different, but I guess... I, I grew up in, uh, in New York first when right. my father was on the show of shows and since he's a show. Right. And, and I was around Mel Brooks and, 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 and Neil Simon and Aaron Rubin and Mel Tog and all the good writers that were on that show that used to come to the house. And I remember as a little kid, you know, I, I went through analysis like a lot of people, a lot of people as crazy as I did. Did you go through analysis? Yes, I yeah. did. And, you know, I, I recalled like my childhood around those people. I never really had an affinity for anybody my age, but I always would very carefully listen to, to, to what these men said. I always found totally fascinating that these men would sit in a room and make each other laugh and I, went to school, you know, I went to school with them, and uh, when we came out here, my father was on the Van Dyke show, and I realized, you know, when you go through analysis, you, you think back to the time when, uh, you know, when you're two and three, and you try to remember when you're early childhood, because hopefully that will right. bring up some, uh, you know, traumas that happened at a very young age, but I, you don't really go through two or three years before, what happened to you uh -huh. two or three years before, but when I was first out of here, I was 14, 15, and 16, around that time, my father was doing the Van Dyke show, and uh, I spent three straight summers going every single day to that studio, 10 hours a day. I walked in, you know, I was, now that I think of that, which I just thought of that recently, that was a strange thing for a kid of my age, because I was a ball player and I love playing ball. And you were but yet I went and did this. I had no, I had no friends with me. My father would put me off in a corner, you know, up in the bleachers as they went and rehearsed the show. I'd watch them block it, rework it, rewrite it. And, uh, you know, I'm drinking it all in. My father would sometimes go down to the stage and I'd sneak up into his office and I'd sit at his desk and I'd look through all the, uh, you know, the scripts and I'd think, you know, about... It was just a, a total learning experience that, that I went through. And from all that, I, uh, you know, assimilated a lot and came up yeah. with nothing. But <laughs> unfortunately. But <laughs> and are ready to go into a home. Yes. Uh, no, that's a strange upbringing because you don't, yeah. as you say, you don't have the youngsters really that you've got to and, and, and I read... I did, it, it, it's strange because as I was drinking all of this stuff in at 13 and 14, I really didn't want to be in show business that much. Yeah. I wanted to be like my father because he was respected and well-liked and everybody, hey, your old man's the nicest man. And, but I didn't really think about wanting to be in show business. I wanted to be a doctor and <coughs> other things as a young... And it wasn't until 17 that I said, yeah, I'll be an actor because I was uh, in a play and all of a sudden I had friends for the first time, you know, whereas I was a loner, like, you know, yeah. you know, a lot of people who get into the business. And uh, then I draw, drew on all of the things, all the experiences that yeah. I had had. So you no, so more, I had a jump no more analysis, had huh? Start, huh? No more analysis, huh? No, not for a while. Not till I get good and crazy again, then Dr. Teicher, here I come again. <laughs> Did you, you were married almost a year ago. 
Yes, I was. I, was, I remember I, you were on the show once, but you were just going to get married. I was. I've been married a year. We were had our first anniversary Oscar night. That's real show business. Yes, and my wife made me a paper mache Oscar. And we sat and watched. It, it was a little strange. Gave you an Oscar for the, the whole behind year. drooped a little bit. You know, it wasn't actually perfect, but the thought was nice. Oscar senior. Yes, yeah, yeah, the, uh, the sectogenarian Oscar. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm going to sell something. All right. We'll see what it is. No, I don't hold up anything. I will just be right back after one of our friendly sponsors speaks his mind, her mind, it's mine. Peacock Blue. Lemon Frost. China Blue Frost. New Super Rich Eyeshadow by Revlon. In 25 colors you just won't find anywhere else. So super rich they last hours without a touch-up and without creasing. Hypoallergenic, too. Dusty Pink Frost. Stormy Blue. Baby Strawberry. Jumbo Compact Mini Price. Super Rich Eyeshadow by Revlon. Beautiful. Close-up toothpaste for the close-up smile. Come a little closer, baby, smile for me. I need a close-up smile from you. For the close-up smile, you need close-up toothpaste with two whiteners and a mouthwash. Close-up gives you fresh breath, makes your teeth their whitest white. In regular or mint flavor, close-up toothpaste for the close-up smile. show we did a tea time movie but we didn't get a chance to talk with our our matinee lady she is uh, she's back with us tonight she's she's for real would you welcome us carol wayne what a play on ben very seldom does that really yes i hear him do it all the time Oh. Okay, and they do it all the time. Yes, How are you tonight? I'm fine. We didn't get a chance to talk with you last night. No, you didn't? I'm not enough? <laughs> so we invited you back tonight. I love you. What do you mean, love, and like you love a steak, you love the weather, you know what I mean, in that context? Yeah. yeah. You were hot last night. Are you hot tonight? <laughs> like a steak. You like a steak. <laughs> yes, like a sizzling, sizzling. Uh, you know, Ed is going to be off next week. He's doing something. Uh, the Junior Miss Pageant. The Junior Miss Pageant. Yes. Uh, mm. uh, which will be on. And Doc is off that night. He's doing something. And we were shy an announcer on the show. And guess who's going to be my announcer next week? Ed, yeah. you're going to fill in for Ed next week and do, yeah. do the announcing chores on I the show. I love doing your job. <laughs> Are you really looking forward to it? Yes. Do I get to feed the hungry little dog and dip my fingers in the jalapeno bean dip with Doc? Oh, oh he you won't can be here. Dip your fingers? Sure. <laughs> sure you can. So, um, you're going to speak with pear-shaped tones, you know, because we have sponsors and everything, and they're very... Yes, yes. Well, Sansa Belt is hard to say itself, isn't it? Besides jalapeno. You did that very well. Did I? Yes, jalapeno bean dip. Yeah, so what else is new? What have you been doing? Well, let's I haven't see. seen you on television lately. Thanks a lot. <laughs> well, no, I didn't know. What were you on? I'm living off my residuals. <laughs> Are you really? Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. They'll last a long time. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's happening around your household? I mean, my household, my Alex, my son, my beautiful son. He's two about now. The terror of Tiny Town. I'm really having behavior problems with him. Why? They say it's either spring fever or the terrible twos. I say black, he says white. I say, what a beautiful day, he says it looks like rain. We're just, you know. <laughs> At two years of age? Of course, two and a half years. I didn't know that started it. Yes. Yeah. Soon. Children can get you in trouble with their conversation, too. He likes to pretend he's different people in the neighborhood. He says, ding dong, I'm the milkman. Give me $20 and a kiss. My husband looks up from the paper. <laughs> he says, ding dong, yes. I'm the mailman. I got letters for you. Give me a kiss. My husband puts the paper down. I think so, yes. He says, Hello, I'm the doctor. Let me kiss your tush. My husband starts walking towards me with little question marks in his eyes. That kid's going to be busted in another week or so. <laughs> I mean, that's a very advanced child. Yes, he's fun. He's really fun. Would you like to see what he really loves to do? Can you come around here and stand 
here? I mean, you're all together back there, aren't you? <laughs> you think I sit here naked from the waist down? <laughs> this will really make oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll start at your knees because he's... You want? Yeah, I'll start. <laughs> I'll start on your tummy because he's only like that big. Creepy, crawly, little mousey, from the barney to the housey, climbed in the cupboard and on the shelf, found some cheese and helped himself. Nibble, nibble, nibble. <laughs> Grown man standing here doing this. Well, I'll... Well, two and a half, that's... You gotta start your That's toe. a big thing when you're two and a half, when you're 46, you don't fall apart at that. <laughs> Do you ever have trouble buying clothes, and I don't mean to be impertinent? <laughs> Seriously, I mean, you're a, a healthy, Seriously. healthy young girl. They don't think of me when they make clothes. Actually, just to get a good-fitting bra, I have to find someone who's willing to give up their parachute. And that's not it. <laughs> Well, oh, for a free fall. <laughs> yeah. Geronimo. Okay. Uh, I didn't mean that. I mean, it's all, I, that probably doesn't well, pose a problem, doesn't it? 34D is like a room number. I mean, no one thinks about it. That, that's 34D? Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. So what else do you want to talk about? What tonight? else? Yeah. My bonsai collection. Would you like to hear about I have three new pomegranates? A test. This is a test from the kids from Nebraska. I make my own fertilizer. <laughs> Do you know the ingredients of fertilizer? <laughs> Do you? Well, basically, I... Uh, you make your own... You bonsai raise bonsai, bonsai trees. Aren't those those little trees? Yes, they are. Japanese they only need trees? little fertilizer. You mix equal parts of cottonseed oil meal and blood meal and bone meal. To that, you add a, a teaspoonful of iron, because they need their vitamins. And then you make a flat. Do you know what a flat is? The word is foreign to my mouth. It's a little <laughs> narrow shell. Yes, I can see that. And you put cheese cloth, cloth over that, and then you dry it out. And then you can cut it out and just crumble it over. Do you know when my apple tree came in bloom this year, people who I hadn't seen for weeks came over just to put their nose in my blooms. Oh. Oh. Beautiful. Not me, folks. No, I'm not going to get us in trouble I'm with that one. I'm taking a pruning course. You're taking a pruning course? Yes. <laughs> okay. Did you know that that improper pruning, your bush could bleed to death? <laughs> School? Yes, yes, really because do. all the little things that are good for the tree goes right to the part that says, oh, you cut me off, and, and it tries to heal that part that's never going to heal. So you got to learn how to prune properly. Of course. These trees are indoors, are they? Or? No, they must have sun and water. Isn't it fun to play with Mother Nature? All you do is water her, <laughs> and she springs up and flowers, and it's really terrific. You really like to get out and mulch the soil. Yes. Get my feet and hands in it. My husband did that album cover of George Carlin. Really? Aren't you impressed? He's a photographer. He is. He's the best. Well, We're I We're going to win a Grammy next year for the Bangladesh album cover. Are you really? Yes, we are. Well, I didn't know that. We'll cry rip off if we don't win it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you are amazing. You really are. You never <laughs> cease to amaze me. No. You really are. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, we're gonna we're gonna come back. Can I say this with you? We're gonna be right, right back after an important word from our sponsor. You're gonna be dynamite. Yeah. <laughs> I am Luis Reyes. This is my family. I have a farm in Cibao. 
the finest land for growing cigar tobacco in all of Santo Domingo. Dutch masters buy my tobacco for their cigars. They buy other mild, expensive tobaccos too, from Colombia, Brazil, Puerto Rico. But to me it is most important that Dutch masters buy my tobacco. If they buy my tobacco, they must make a very good cigar. Little old lady passing by. Dubonnet, the drink for little old ladies who are this little and just about this old. Old enough to share your taste for something unexpected any time of day, like Dubonnet straight or on the rocks. Dubonnet, whenever you and your little old lady get together. Little old lady mine. Dubonnet, it all started in France. All righty. My next guest uh, is pretty famous for his 10 worst dressed women of the year, which he puts out. Uh, but he has a new career. He has his own radio show daily on uh, KBC. I guess that's here in Los Angeles, is it not? Would you welcome Mr. Blackwell? <laughs> Can I get something straight before we start? Did you say you were living on your residuals? Yes. Is that what they call them now? I just don't believe it. Really, she's, well, she's unbelievable. She's an attractive girl, isn't she? Yeah. Uh, can I get one other thing straight? Oh, straight? Yeah. Sure. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> what dress designer in his right mind would want to dress her? You understand? Yes. Okay, great. Oh, Didn't you come here to talk or pick up girls? Uh, uh, I haven't something. heard your radio show. What, what, what do you do on a radio show? Well, we answer questions, and uh, <coughs> a lot of people call, and they have great hang-ups, and they want to know what they should do about something. Women call. With Tremendous problems? Tremendous amount of women, and they say, uh, how do I know if my husband is cheating on me? A ridiculous thing like this. On the air, they call yeah, it? Yeah, right on the air. And sometimes they're really not doing it. What they're doing is trying to expose an emotion, no. and they may be in their heart wish they could discuss it if it were true. On the other hand, it isn't true. So I try to answer it. And of course, I'm no psychiatrist. I can't really... That's what I was going to ask. What kind well, of you come you up have? with answers like, uh, well, does he work late at the office? A ridiculous thing like that, you know. Or does he get undressed in the bathroom when he comes home late at night now? <laughs> Things of that type. Or... Uh, is he, uh, yeah, or, you know, those kind of things, and they're really amazing. Guys call. What are they, it's what are their problems? unbelievable. Guys call, and they say, what do I do about my wife if she's flat-chested? And it wasn't your husband. No, no, <laughs> no, it had nothing to do with him. And you say, well, you know, was she flat-chested before you married her? And he won't answer it. You kind of wonder what he's done to this poor creature. And you, uh, you just wore it off, I suppose. I'm not really quite sure. Yeah, but I'm not all that bright about these things. I had a woman call. I had a woman call, and she says, how do I dress my monkey for a wedding? I went dead silent. I just simply couldn't believe it. So I was trying to be polite, and I said, madam, is it a member of the bride's family Good. or the groom's family? Not, not bad, you not bad. You never really know what to say about these things. But you come up with these crazy kind of answers, and it's unbelievable. Yeah. Do they, they ever do. ask you fashion advice? Oh, they do. Yeah, they do. And I put them on, I really do. And they call me, and they, they give me hell. They say, how dare you? You know, how dare you name the ten worst dressed women? How dare you pick on those ladies, the, you know, lovely right. ladies? And I tell them how I did, and they say, well, how do you come to this conclusion? I say, very simple. You open your eyes, and you take a good look, and they look rotten, and you simply say they look rotten. That's all there is to it. And it just kind of goes on. Didn't you say you were coming out next year with the 10 worst-dressed men? For no, no, or? I'm going to name the designers. Well, that's what you were going to do. You were going to name Who are most responsible for creating the atrocities that women have to wear. <gasps> Isn't and, this uh, uh, leaving you opening, uh, open for bad news some night, somewhere? You mean, I mean would they be angry sure. at me? Oh, yeah, I'm sure a few designers don't like <coughs> me right now. There's no problem. I mean, like Doc said to me on the way in tonight, don't I look great? And I said, in your 
threadbare pillowcase, see-through job. He looked marvelous, Doc. <laughs> and I thought it was really dreadful. I really did, but he isn't mad at me about it, are you, Doc? No, not at all. <laughs> no, no. Stab me to death, I'm sure. No, you have constant all. feuds going? Yeah, I, I kind of do, because I'm honest. Yeah. I want to say things that I, you know, believe are true. Mm. Like, I have a tremendous feud going with Rona Barrett right now. Oh. You've heard of Rona Barrett? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> well, she isn't played all over the country, you know, that little... She's a syndication, I believe. No, that little dingy thing she does. But uh, people who don't see her get very lucky. You know, if you really can't see this woman. Her hairline is dropping a lot faster than her face. I just simply don't understand it, really. Johnny, last night on your show, three people walked off and they said, you never had an award. Mm -hmm. You know that? You have. Oh. Let me read it to you. Rona Barrett gave you an award. Did I, you know didn't, this? I didn't know that, no. She was nice about you. Wait till I tell you what she said about me. She, uh, the only rotten part was you were 10th on the list. There were 10 of us, and you were number 10. And she said, oh. finally, the award that really counts. The award for mentioning a warm, wonderful, lovable, and kindly person. Then she says, us, that is, the most times on a network program. And the winner is, who else? Johnny Carson. So Roni gave you an award transcript of December 20th, 1971. So all I don't those people... All of that. What kind well, of this award is, is that? No, well, this is pretty weird, but this is why Rona is pretty whacked up, if you think that's bad. I didn't, didn't really understand, understand that. that. Well, I don't understand what she did to me. Uh, this year, the Mr. Blackwell Award for high fashion goes to Mr. Blackwell for designing an exciting, off-the-shoulder, fully sequined net sheath with a full puff arm and ermine knee length trim, black pearl handbag to match, and then wearing it himself to a <laughs> Sears Roebuck opening. That's not bad, I like that one. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand mine at all. I don't understand mine her at name. all. What? The most times you've mentioned her name. Oh, I see. Yeah, well, that's it. You have to read this entire thing at least 20 times. Yeah, I couldn't really. Because in the whole thing, she, I think, gave Cary Grant the Mother of the Year Award, and I didn't understand that at all either. Rona is a pretty strange gal. She's yeah. trying to, I think, take the place of Luella Parsons, Hedda Hopper. Yeah, but in those days, really, and so I'm not being trying to patronize Rona Barrett. Luella Parsons and Hedda Hopper really had a tremendous amount of influence on performers' careers. They could pick up the phone and call Louis V. Mayer or somebody and really almost put and somebody out of business. And record. I don't think that no. happens today with newspaper columnists or uh, gossip columnists no. or people at all. No, because people couldn't give a darn. Yeah. They really couldn't. That was when it was kind of new. If, and, uh, if Rona said you were no good, you wouldn't care, really. Because I am no good. <laughs> no. And no, but you see, in those days, the, the, those columnists could wreck a star's career. Absolutely. Now the stars no can wreck the columnist's career. Absolutely. I'm spreading some words about Rona Barrett. Now, would you be, you know, Rona could say you're flat-chested. You know, and that, wouldn't that be ridiculous? I'd laugh. <laughs> no, no, she has no power, Johnny, no strength at all. She has really a tremendous mouth with a little tiny itty-bitty show. So what harm can she possibly do anyway? Getting a lot of press tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it ain't the right kind. That's the whole thing. So don't you really think they like that kind of stuff? I don't think Rona. Okay. I don't think Rona's gonna like me at all for this. Yeah. And it's really all my doing. You had nothing to do with it because I saved this little transcript. No, I hadn't heard that before. To read it to you because I felt you should know you had an award. Still don't understand really it, but uh, thank you for that. I don't. Do <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you all for being here tonight. Pleasure. Enjoyed it, Mr. Blackwell. Carol, we'll see you. When are you going to get the fill in thread? Next week. Huh? The ninth. The ninth of May. You'll be with us. Rob, thanks very much for dropping in. George, as usual, and Johnny, you'll be at McCormick Place on the twentieth. Sir. Okay. Tomorrow night we have Andy Williams, Joanne Worley, Michael Constantine, Paul Williams, and the Mighty Carson Art Players. We'll give it another shot. Thanks. Good night. <laughs>
This program was pre-recorded.
Vâng, xin chào các bác nhé thì Hôm nay em Hoàng Mỹ Linh lại mới về một mẫu xe Xe mưa lắng Nhỏ gọn Khá là thông thuộc với cả Bà con Việt Nam Hôm nay là em giới thiệu cho các bác Chiếc xe Chevrolet Spark Sản xuất năm 2009 Phiên bản số sàn 5 chỗ Tên tư nhân biển Hà Nội Đấy, chiếc xe còn khá là cứng cáp Đấy, thì, uh, Cứng cáp là sao là thân vỏ không đâm đụng, không mục mọt gì Và lưng sơn thì uh, bác chủ xe là bác ấy cũng mới sơn lại Nên là uh, uh, nhìn uh, tổng thể bên ngoài của chiếc xe uh, Rất là sạch sẽ, gọn gàng Đấy, uh, 4 quả lốp thì còn tương đối là mới đang Thời hạn đăng kiểm thì đến tháng uh, 4 Năm... Uh, 2021 Đấy, và thì sau đây là em quay qua luôn một lượt bên ngoài cho các bác xem Để tránh là mất nhiều thời gian của các bác và em cũng bảo giá luôn chiếc xe này là em bán với giá là 80 triệu Đấy, chiếc xe sản xuất năm 2009 Đấy, thân vỏ máy móc nó còn nguyên bản Đấy, không có đâm trồ tai nạn ngập lụt gì cả Máy gầm là ok hết Mọi cái nó vừa mới được bảo dưỡng uh, Ngon lành rồi Đấy, Các bác về là chỉ việc uh, đổ xăng là chạy thôi Đấy, Tầm tiền uh, chưa đến 100 triệu Đấy, Chiếc xe đời 2009 Đấy, Khá là đẹp, sơn si khá là đẹp Đấy. Bác nào có nhu cầu thì liên hệ với em theo số điện thoại là 0968 095 864 và địa chỉ xem xe thì là ở Mê Linh các bác nhé Em ở gần ủy ban huyện Mê Linh Đấy, Các bác xem qua một lượt Đấy, Bác nào có nhu cầu kiếm một chiếc xe che mưa lắng cái Tầm tiền dưới 100 à, Còn chất lượng thì à, nhanh tay liên hệ với em Đấy, Vừa rồi là em quay cho các bác qua một lượt bên ngoài Đấy, Sơn si sạch đẹp, đăng kiểm dài Máy gầm, gầm bệ, máy móc là ngon lành hết rồi Vừa bảo dưỡng hết rồi còn nội thất thì rất là sạch sẽ Đây, nội thất để quay luôn cho các bác xem Rất, rất là sạch sẽ Đấy, ghế ra hai màu Đấy. Tương đối là sạch sẽ Đã làm một chiếc đầu, chủ xe đã làm một chiếc đầu Đấy. Rất là hầm hố nhưng mà bác nào mà tha, muốn thay thì là em sẽ thay cho các bác chiếc đầu này Thành cái đầu nhỏ gọn hơn Đấy, Thất ghế ra, táp ly nó rất sạch sẽ Trần thì là cũng rất là trắng đẹp này Đấy, Trần xe rất trắng đẹp Các bác xem Đấy, Táp ly, táp lô Đấy. Thân vỏ nó thì khá là cứng cáp như các bác nhé Không có đâm trồ tai nạn gì cả Ngoài nước sơn được bác chủ bác ấy sơn lại thôi Còn thì không có đâm đụng, va chạm gì cả Đấy. Đây là phía sau Đấy, Khá là sạch sẽ Đây là mở cốp cho các bác xem Đấy, Đây là phía sau sẽ đẹp đẽ. Đây thì chỉ có đổ xăng về các bác chỉ có đổ xăng là chạy thôi. Đây là túi đựng đồ tháo phụ tùng tháo lốp sơ cua các bác nhé. Đi trên đường có bị sao thì chúng ta là có sẵn cái để mà tháo. Đấy, còn đây là khoang để lốp sơ cua. Đấy, rất là gọn dẹp rất sạch sẽ, không có gì mọt gì cả. cái đồ nhựa của nó còn cũng rất là tương đối nhé các bác nhé Đấy. đây là bên cánh bên phụ Đấy, chất lượng xe với cái tầm tiền 80 triệu Đấy, dưới 100 triệu và đã có một chiếc xe xe mưa nắng Đấy, không lo chở cả gia đình đi <cười> Uh, chơi hoặc là uh, 
đi làm những người mà mới có bằng tập lái cũng rất là là tiện vì nó rất là nhỏ gọn xăng thì có 0,8 thôi ăn xăng thì như người quá nhé đảm bảo luôn là xe không đâm đụng tai nạn gì cả quay khoang máy cho các bác xem điều hòa mát lạnh luôn nha các bác nhé điều hòa hai chiều đây đang bật đây ở gió đây bốn cửa gió điều hòa con này là rất là mát nha các bác nhé điều hòa rất mát hai chiều đủ cả Đấy. anh quay khoang đầu cabo và máy cho các xe Đấy. con máy đây cũng rất là sạch sẽ máy móc rất ok rất ok luôn máy nổ rất êm nhé các bác nhé máy nổ đây cực êm luôn sạch sẽ máy rất êm À, thì vừa rồi em có quay cho các bác xem à, à, một chiếc xe ô tô mang nhãn hiệu Chevrolet Park à, nó được sản xuất năm 2009 số sàn 5 chỗ tên tư nhân biển Hà Nội màu trắng à, chiếc xe à, em đang chào bán với giá là 80 triệu đồng thì 80 triệu đồng thôi các bạn siêu rẻ và về chất lượng của nó thì còn rất là tương đối Đấy. Thì, đăng kiểm thời hạn đăng kiểm thì đến à, tháng 4 năm 2021 và máy móc gầm bệ mọi cái là em đã kiểm tra em đã test thử rồi giờ về các bác là chỉ có đổ xăng và chạy thôi đấy thì bác nào có nhu cầu thì liên hệ với em theo số điện thoại là 0968 095 864 và địa chỉ xem xe thì là ở mê linh em ở gần ủy ban nhân dân huyện mê linh nhé các bác nhé vâng xin kính chào tạm biệt các bác cảm ơn các bác và quý vị và anh chị đã theo dõi video